My next guest really needs no introduction. It is my distinct honor to introduce Representative Jim McGovern, who is currently serving his ninth term in Congress representing Massachusetts. Representative McGovern is a member of the House Agriculture Committee. He is also the co-chair of the House Hunger Caucus. A champion of Feed the Future and global food security efforts, Representative McGovern successfully expanded the McGovern Dole International Food for Education and Child Nutrition Program to help alleviate child hunger and poverty by providing kids better access to nutritious foods in schools around the world. Um, Representative McGovern, we are so delighted to have you come here. I know Crystal City seems, can seem like it's dullest sometimes, so we appreciate you coming down from Capitol Hill to join us. Please join me in welcoming him. Well, thank you, Jada, and thank you for the uh, kind introduction. But in all honesty, I'm the one who is grateful to be here this morning. Uh, I am a member of Congress. I work in that building across the river that is the epitome of dysfunction. Um, but I wanted to come here to tell you that, um, to say thank you. Uh, because what you, are, what you all are doing is working uh, and making an incredible difference. And I always welcome the chance to be among so many good friends and people who care about ending hunger and advancing nutrition ensuring that mothers and their children get the food and nutrition they need to live full, productive, and healthy lives. Making sure that when kids go to school, that they have the kind of good, healthy meals that allow them to actually learn and take advantage of staying in school. All of you who know that one, of, all of you know, who know that one out of three people around the world make their living from agriculture, but too many of these small farmers suffer in poverty. All of you who know that many of the small farmers of the world are women. And I'm so happy that we finally discovered women. Um, and, uh, and not only can we help and support them, but we can actually learn a lot when we listen, when we listen to what they have to say and the ideas that they have to share. All of you who are dedicated to creating resilient communities that can liter literally weather the kind of economic and climate shocks rocking the world today. So I am, I am so grateful to be with each and every one of you. I'm so glad to have the opportunity to tell you how much I admire and respect all that you do and all that you have accomplished. Uh, in my opinion, you're, you're all rock stars. Uh, and so are your partners around the globe. Those, the, the farmers, the families and teachers and community leaders who with a little help and support have dreamed about a better life making a commitment and change the lives and the lives of their families and communities. What is happening here is inspirational. But I really want to share with all of you why I made this effort to get across the river and to be with you today. I made the effort because I am excited and I am very proud. I'm excited by the progress that is being made, the lessons that are being learned, the knowledge that is being shared and applied, the lives that are being changed for the better, and I'm so proud of all of that as well. You know, what you are engaged in, um, to me, represents the best of our country. And when I tell people back in my district in Massachusetts about this, and I want you to know that I do brag about this, to uh, not just the usual suspects, but when I talk to union groups, or chamber of commerce meetings, or small business leaders, or rotary clubs, I talk about this effort, this Feed the Future effort, that this country is involved in with partners all around the world and about the difference that you are making. You know, and, and they're proud of that as well. Because I, you know, I believe, and I think all of you do, that it is possible to end hunger on this planet. Uh, it has always been, it, it has always, um, <laughs> you know, what, what has been maddening about that issue to me is that we all know what to do. Uh, but we haven't mustered the global political will to do it. Hunger is a political condition. I mean, you know, we know what to do. And, um, and, and, and I talk about the, the dedication that all of you have to creating sustainable communities and ending extreme poverty. You know, and I, and I, and, and I think we need to get this story out uh, more, quite frankly, 
because this is the kind of foreign aid that I think is very popular. You know, I know, um, I, you know, I, I, uh, I know how hard it has been to achieve the results that a lot of you are celebrating uh, these, the, uh, this, this day. I know how long it took to get our various government departments and agencies to come together and design a new approach to ending hunger, promoting nutrition and agricultural development, and increase, increasing food security around the world. Getting agencies and departments to work is tough. Getting them to work together is even tougher. But you have established a collaboration here that I think is working very, very well. I know that as programs took place in the focus countries that we learned from best practices. And we learned from lessons from, we also learned lessons from our mistakes and our failures. I know that it was important to put in place the many measures and evaluation tools that we use today to ensure that progress is more than just anecdotal. And here we are today with Monday's progress report spelling out for us how, how far we have come. You know, as someone who has been beating a drum for nutrition, small farmers, women, and resilience to be at the very center of, uh, center of all of our programs and strategies, I am so excited to read about how we turn these words into the very heart of our strategies and priorities. And the results are there for all of us to see. I'm so very excited about the new partnership between Feed the Future and Interaction to expand the program partnerships with civil, civil society. And I'm looking forward to, to read the nutrition strategy that will be coming out uh, tomorrow. So I know we have many challenges and, and a long journey ahead. And I think that everyone knows that I want to expand the program, reach more people in the target countries, and, in, and initiate programs in new countries. As I said the other night, if I were Speaker of the House, I'd quadruple Feed the Future's budget. But, um, And so here's the here's kind of the the, cha the real challenge, and and what and I and I and I hope that all of you are will be engaged uh, in what needs to be done. We need to work to institutionalize the program, not just within USAID, but also to institutionalize the government-wide co coordination that has been a hallmark of this initiative from the very beginning. You know, we need to take this show on the road. You know, I mentioned I, I talked to my constituents about this, or people who never ever ask about anything we do overseas. And when you talk about this stuff, they, they get really excited. They, they really feel the sense of, you know, that this is a wise investment of their taxpayer dollars. But most of these people don't always know about it. So I need to take this show on the road. Um, I told Raj he should go on Oprah. You know, Mor Morning Joe, The View, maybe Dancing with the Stars, I don't know, whatever, whatever it takes. Um, <laughs> And when he's not available, some of you should do it. Um, because, because there really is a, there is a powerful story to be told here. Um, you know, I listen to the news like all of you do, and, and all we hear about are all the failures and all the, all the things that aren't working. Um, I think it's important not just to focus on that, but to focus on what is working, you know, and the collaborations that have taken place. I know there are many ministers from various countries here as well. I mean, I would encourage you in your home countries to brag about what is going on. I'm a big believer that success breeds success, but we, we need to get the story out. And in Congress, uh, that, is, that is especially important because Congress reacts to public opinion. It reacts to news stories that appear uh, on television. Uh, people get persuaded by that. And, um, you know, and they also react, quite frankly, when you show up in their office and tell them real stories. I had a group that came in to t yesterday to visit me, and again, told me about what was going on in, their, in the countries that they represented. It is important. I'm gonna tell you something that may shock some of you, but intelligence is not always a prerequisite for serving in the United States Congress. Um, it is important that you view your role as teachers as well, um, because I think, I think, we, I think we, have a, we have the possibility here to do something phenomenal, to build on what you have already have already done, you know, and make it even bigger and greater. So, you know, being who I am, I'm going to continue to encourage and push, and be a bit of a pest to make sure that those areas that still need to be stronger are strengthened, and those areas that need to be improved do indeed get better. 
and that small farmers and women and schools and clinics and families and communities that would like to participate in Feed the Future uh, agricultural and child nutrition programs get the opportunity to do so. I have traveled to countries, you know, in, in Latin America that really would like more, would like to be part of this Feed the Future initiative. I mean, what, this is, this could be contagious uh, and this is all good. So much remains to be done. So much more can actually be undertaken. But for today, for this brief moment, I just want all of you to know how proud and excited I am by all that you have accomplished. As a United States Congressman, as a citizen of this country, as a citizen of this world, this is exactly the type of stuff we should be doing. And quite frankly, we should have been doing it a long time ago. Uh, and so um, I'm gonna do everything I can to, uh, to, to push this, uh, not only amongst my colleagues, but even push the administration to be bolder uh, I understand Susan Rice is going to be giving a speech. I talked to her the other day. We were talking about some of the problems in the world. I said, you got to talk about Feed the Future. She says, I am. I'm giving a speech on it on Thursday. As you got to tell the president, you got to talk about this. Next State of the Union address, this ought to be a centerpiece of his speech about what we are doing that is working around the world. You know, um, you know So let me close by simply saying that I genuinely look forward to working with all of you inside and outside the government as we continue to feed the future. Uh, and, um, and I'm here to say thank you because people don't say thank you enough uh, in this business. Um, people always tell you what's wrong, they always tell you what you're not doing, uh, but people never take the time to say thank you. Uh, and so I am here uh, to say a heartful thank you. Um, what you are doing is amazing. Please, please, you know, push this as hard as you can because this really is changing the world for the better. Uh, and, um, and I am in great admiration of all of your work. So thank you for having me here. I hope your conference goes well. Thank you.